Amen. Wow, what a time of praise and worship. Amen. Give the Lord a hand for that. Wow, what, what a great morning. Man, you all sounded like you meant what you were singing. Amen. That's amazing. Well, hey, it's time for our kindergarten, first and second graders to be dismissed to Children's Church. Miss Carrie is in the back waiting on you. So if y'all would like to head on out, uh, we'll be seeing y'all in just a little bit. Want to welcome everybody and thank you for tuning in here at First Baptist West. If you're joining us on the live stream, we're glad that you joined us and want to invite you to be in person with us here at any time uh, during uh, our Sunday services, but continue uh, to join us live if you can. Thank you all for being here uh, this morning. Today what I want to look at is this is the time that we give the state of the church. The state of the church is... Uh, where I'm going to be giving you information, and uh, what we've done is every year on the second Sunday of January, I give, every, I give you what we call the state of the church, just like the president would give the state of the union address. I feel like it's important that you as a church know what, get a recap of all that's going on last year and some of the things that we're going to be looking at uh, this year. So when we look at this, uh, this is about my, I believe this is my eighth time of giving the state of the church address. Now, if we had term limits, this would be my last one. <laughs> Amen. Well, what I'm hoping today is that this is not my last one. I hope you, you will allow me to give at least eight more. All right. So we're going to, we're going to shoot for that. But just in case, uh, I just want you to know, I, I don't believe in, I, I would be okay with some term limits in some areas, but for the church, I hope you don't participate in that. Amen. So anyway, what I want to do is to give you the state of the church, give you some basic information and some reports, but also look at uh, some things in the future, and then we'll get into Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 is where we're going to be. I'm going to be sharing my message with you from, with the idea of a vision, because the Bible tells us where there's no vision, or there's no revelation, or there is no guidance or direction the people will cast off restraints and so we're going to be looking at that today but a couple of things I want us to, to look at here is the first and foremost with the the state of the church is I want to give you the yearly report and the one of the yearly reports is uh, the, the recorded salvations we praise the Lord that this year we recorded four people who came to know Jesus during our worship times here amen so that's exciting that's what we're here about amen we want to be able to see people come to Jesus. Now, the reason I put recorded uh, salvations is because we know that there have been other people who have been saved uh, through our ministries that, that were not recorded here in the church, that maybe through, um, through the bridge ministry, some other things that we've been doing throughout the year that people have come to know Jesus. Now, I'm excited to have four, but one thing that I want you to understand is, man, it would thrill my heart, and I believe I talked to you one year about having... Uh, one person come to know Jesus a week here at first through First Baptist West. And my friends, that's not impossible because with God all things are possible. Amen. So we want to celebrate four, but we want more. Amen. We this year we want to see more people come to Jesus and have their lives transformed by his saving grace. We had four baptisms this year. So we we want to praise the Lord about that with new members. Uh, we had twenty new members join First Baptist West. And we want to say thank you for those new members for coming and being a part of our church. And I know that God has uh, opened up ministries because of the new members that, that he has brought on. Now, reported guests. We had 75 reported guests. Now, what that reported is, is that those are first-time guests that that filled out reports. We know that there are more people that have attended as guests than, than the 75, but those are recorded. But also there was this thing starting in March. If you'll remember, uh, something happened in March of last year that created uh, a mess for the church, and that was that we, uh, due to COVID, we stopped for about three months. And so that, of course, re uh, then allowing it to open and some people still not wanting to feel comfortable to get out. So we feel very good that we had 75 guests. And if, uh, if we, I know we have more that join us on the live stream. So we're very, very excited about that. The second one is with our, our average attendance. We want to talk to you about that just a little bit. The average attendance for our Sunday school is 190. Now, again, that was with uh, this COVID thing happening. Our small groups uh, disbanded for a while. Uh, we're, so we, we did a lot of them on now uh, for when we came back was doing them 
with the, the uh, Zoom meetings, and so we're now beginning to see those numbers go back up. Now, our worship attendance, our 8 o'clock service, we averaged 72. is kind of what we have every Sunday. That's the average. And then we had 121 average in our second service. Again, not counting anybody on the live stream. So we, we praise the Lord for that. The next one after that is, of course, our Sunday evening. That was, again, before COVID, because since March... We didn't have anything on Sunday evening, which again, as you heard today, we're starting back tonight. So we want to encourage everybody to come back for our Bible studies, choirs at four o'clock, as Patrick said, our Bible studies start at six o'clock and the big, big news and the big deal and the thing that I get asked almost every time we get ready to talk about Sunday evening is, are there going to be will snacks? The answer is yes, there will be some will snacks. It's going to be less and a little different than what we've done in the past because we're, we're not, Will's not able to throw out his uh, nine-table buffet uh, for a snack, but we're going to condense that down and serve you. But yes, the will snacks will be there starting around 5.30. But we have our uh, Sunday evenings average 124, and, and that's really a, a good average, especially... Uh, with the things that were going on. Our Wednesday evening, we averaged 102. That was with our men's and women's Bible studies, our Awana and our youth worship time. So we averaged 102 there. Tuesday, now that's not Tuesday evening, but that's Tuesday morning. Uh, our, we have the ladies' Bible study on Tuesday morning, and that's starting back up. But we averaged 16 there. Sometimes there'd be over 20 women, 25 women there. Sometimes it'd be less. But the average was uh, 16 on Tuesday morning. And so those will be starting back up as well. The financial aspect of the church that I want to go over, and we've got some great things going on here. Now, before I even get to that point, I want to say thank you to all you as members of First Baptist West, because I promise you when the COVID struck and and people were being concerned, I know pastors, myself included, were praying, Lord, help us with the budget. But last year, our budget for 2020 was $661,028. Praise the Lord to your faithfulness. We took in. Now, this is not designated funds this is not money given to anything other than the budget okay so we received six hundred and forty seven thousand eight hundred seventy four dollars from our membership i want to say thank you because that equals out to be about an average a 98 percent of our budget we received and on a year like this year this past year praise god amen you remained faithful and i have promised you from the scripture that if you remain faithful god will remain faithful so thank you uh for that because of covid though part of that has helped is that our expenditures were quite low so it's five hundred and seventy seven thousand uh seven hundred seventy two dollars and thirty four cents is what a budget money that we spent this year on everything in our church but because of the covid because of us not having camps and all these different things that we had to that we usually spend money on we were able to carry over seventy thousand dollars from the into the new year putting into our savings account now we will have some things that we want to do with that god has laid my heart laid on my heart some things we're going to be presenting that to you over the next couple of weeks and then as we go into business meeting uh, to approve some things of use of some of that money that I think is going to honor God and, and bring glory to his kingdom. So, but thank you uh, to, to go through a year like we just had and to have that carryover again is phenomenal. And that is due again to your, your faithfulness. And so we want to, as we look at that, that's our budget. Then the second aspect of it is our building, uh, our loan. Uh, as many of you, okay, hold on. There we go. Uh, as many of you are aware, some of you at home may not be aware, that we built the new section of our building some years back. In order to do that, we had to take out a loan through the Baptist Foundation of Oklahoma, uh, which is part of the Southern Baptist Convention. We took out a $1.5 million, almost a $1.5 million loan to finish that up. We had half of it, we borrowed the other half. And so last year, as we've been paying it off, we, hit, we started 2020 with the remaining balance of $1,036,548.78. That was what we owed at the start of 2020. We were able to, through the monthly payment, and as you know, the monthly payment is the square, uh, one square foot campaign. That's what we've been going over the last few years. And so what happens there is that we don't pay any of our loan payment from our budget. We prayed and and as you give to the square foot campaign, that pays our loan. So through that, last year we were able to pay $54,647.38 on to the principal for that. 
Now, we did pay of an interest of $47,279.06. Now, praise the Lord, this is the first year we paid less interest than we paid principal. Amen? So we're getting it there. Yeah, give him a hand. That's good. That's good news. Now, one of the things you say, well, that's a lot of principal. Well, that's not as much principal as we paid to a regular loan foundation. But the second good thing about it is that the foundation takes the money that's, that we pay in interest and they start using it again for missions. They use it to help other to, to smaller churches in Oklahoma. And so that money goes back into the kingdom. Amen. So if we're going to pay interest, it's not lining somebody's pocket. It's focusing on the kingdom of God. And so we, we're wanting to get that interest down and we're doing that. Now, the good news with that is that because of your faithfulness of, of your giving, we were able to, in the leadership of the, of, the, of the great budget committee, the finance committee, we were able to take an extra $52,000 and apply it to principal. So do you want to talk? We've got a lot of that paid off. So $52,000 extra. Not, that's not with the, the interest from our loan, our, our principal from our loan. That's extra money. So now we have gotten that money down from 1.4 to where you saw uh, last year, last year beginning was 1036000 We now have it down to $929,901. We are looking, we got rid of the one, amen? That was our goal to start with, get rid of that one. We got rid of the one, now we want to see that nine drop. And so now we've begun the countdown for nine, eight, seven. So if a uh, hundred of you have a ten thousand dollars that would really help if you wanted to do that uh we could figure out how much you would be able to pay on that but anyway praise god we are being able to uh knock down that loan and it is again because of your faithfulness uh to to god and and to first baptist west so we look at that and we're very excited about what god is doing the one thing that i want you to understand is that what you're going to be seeing a lot of in the in this next year starting in february you're going to be hearing a lot about connecting to serve in 2021. And so that is the idea of what we're going to be doing is we're going to be encouraging people to be connected and serve. We've, we've done a lot of discipling. We're, we're doing a great job there. We're now wanting to move that into serving uh, what God has called us to do. Now with that, th you're going to be seeing something resembling this a lot this year around the church. I'm going to be doing messages on it. And so what we're going to be doing is connecting. There's three phases of connection that we're going to be looking at this year. One of them, and the very first one, is the vertical connection between us and God. Now, we're going to, I'm going to be sharing messages with you starting in February uh, that deal with connecting to God. And as we connect to Him, to be serving Him, to be sacrificing ourselves over, to saying, God, here I am, what would you have me do, and how would you have me serve you? And so we're going to be looking at connecting to God. The first uh, horizontal one is to your left, and that would be connecting to the church, to being a part of what's going on at First Baptist West, the Bible studies, the worships, the, the activities, everything that we have going on, to be connected to the church, not just to be coming, but to make, as I say to all new members as I visit with them, is that our desire is that you make First Baptist West your church, not just a church you go to. Because if it's just a church you go to, you can hit it or miss it, no big deal. You can be a part, not part. You can support it or not support it. But if it's your church, if you're connected to the body, is where I'm going to be preaching over the next several weeks. If you're connecting to the body, then you'll be part in serving in that church. The other part to, to the right is the serving of people, that, that we are to be connected to each other. But we're not only connected to each other to serve each other, but we are to be connected to the outside world, folks. Amen? And we're going to be talking about how we as a church can connect to people who are lost and show them the love of Jesus, that we can bring them into the kingdom through Jesus Christ and his salvation. So we're going to be talking a lot, how do we serve in 2021? We're going to be doing a lot of different activities. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, some surveys of finding your spiritual gifts. We're going to be trying to match you up with, with different ministries of things that you're interested in. So all of that is going to be happening. So the theme for 2021 is connecting to serve in 2021. And so you're going, again, to be hearing a lot about this. You're going to be seeing things all over the church about that and all of this is due to the fact of having a vision having a, a, a revelation if you will and so as we look and we see the bible tells us 
in the book of Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people cast off restraints, but happy is he who keeps the law. And so when we look at this, we see the idea about what vision. The, the, there's other translations where there is no revelation, where there is no understanding. The people will cast off restraints. And we know that restraints in, in the worldly sense is not good because no one wants to be restrained in the worldly sense. That means you're held captive under, your, under duress and that you, you're not free to do anything and move about anywhere you want to go. But what the Bible's talking about here is that if we uh, have, do not have that wisdom or we do not have that understanding that we're going to begin to cast off those restraints now we as parents know that restraints are good amen we we put restraints we put fences around our yard amen to keep our kids from getting out into the streets we don't want them to cast off that restraint we put curfews on them so that we want to know where they are we want them to in at a certain time why again for their benefit and so we don't want them casting off those restraints and so the Bible tells us that where there is a vision, where there is a revelation, then they will keep on those restraints. And then it says, and happy is he who keeps the law. So that's what's going to keep us at peace and at happy. And so as we look into the new thing, new year, we understand then that the very first part of that is spiritual understanding. That's what basically, if you will, that's what the revelation is. That's what the vision is, is that you understand spiritually. And you, you have that understanding that spiritual uh, help is there. That, if you will, that direction or disclosure. Because if we have the idea of spiritually understanding the things of God, then we know that it's going to be, that we're going to have direction. We're going to have a purpose. We're not going to be wandering around knowing what in the world is going on and we don't have any idea. Can I tell you something that God wants us to know His will? That we don't have to wonder when we're talking about this spiritual uh, understanding is that God is revealing truth to us and that we understand it. We kind of know where he wants us to go. I think a lot of times we picture God as, as like playing a game with us. That we don't know what God wants. And, and so we're standing in the middle here and we yell out, Marco! And God's over here and he goes, Polo. And we turn and we start looking and then he goes, oh. And he runs back over here, and so we're now going, Marco, Polo. And then he runs over here. Folks, can I tell you, God does not play Marco Polo with us in his will. He wants us to see. He wants us to know. Because he wants to give us direction. He wants to give us disclosure. Helen Keller once said this. What would be worse than being born blind? She responded, said, being born with sight, but not having any vision. To, to be able to look out and see things, but not understand what's going on. Can I tell you, there's a world with that right now. There's a world that's looking out, and they're seeing something. But there is confusion in our land. There's confusion in our world. Because there are people who have sight, they're seeing things going on, but they have no understanding of what's happening. And that's the worst thing you could have is, is to have a sight, but not being able to understand what it is you're seeing. Because again, I want you to understand something. Jesus tells us what his will is. Jesus says, no longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my Father. Listen to me. All the things that I have heard from my Father. God the Father has revealed the, His will to God the Son. Everything that I have heard from the Father, I now am as the Son am telling, am telling you all disclosure. I'm not holding anything back from you. If it were not so, I would tell you, Jesus doesn't want us confused. Jesus doesn't want us wondering. Jesus does not want us scampering around. Jesus does not want us tripping over ourselves. Jesus wants us to know what it is we're doing. Amen. And he said, I will tell you everything that the Father has told the Son. He now tells us, through God, the Holy Spirit that lives in us, that he says, I want to tell you, I'm not hiding it. I'm, I'm not your, your, your master where it's none of your business what I'm doing. You just do it because I say, and you don't have a choice. You just do it. He says, that's not the way I operate. I want you to know what's going on. 
And so listen to me. In this crazy world, all we need to know is that God loves us and God wants us to understand things and that He will bring revelation to us. He will bring spiritually understanding to us that we will look out in this world and we will know that what's going on. Because why? Because of the second part. That not only do we have that, but we have a spiritual truth. Where there is spiritual truth, people will know what's going on. Where there is no spiritual truth, people then will cast off the restraints because they're not going to believe what it is going on. They'll not understand it. The thing that I want you to know about this that I, I want to scream out to the world is that something is not truth just because you believe it hard enough. Just because you're willing to, to die for it doesn't mean it's the truth, amen? You can be lied to. I believe the world is fighting on a truth that's not real. And they're believing it with all of their heart and because they believe it, because they feel it, that's got to be the absolute truth. And you've got to do what the world says to do. But here's what we've got to understand is something is not truth just because you believe it hard enough. Jesus said to all of us, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He didn't say I am a way, a truth, and a life. He says I am the definitive. I am, if you want, if you, if you want a way, I am that way. If you want the truth, you apply me to, to, every, to every situation, you will know the truth. And he says, I am the life. You want life, apply Jesus into your life and you will understand what life is. As a matter of fact, he says, no man comes to the Father except through me. Can I tell you this? There's a lot of people who are out there seeking a God. But he said, you will not get to Jehovah. You will not even get understanding of what Jehovah God is wanting until you put me into it. It is through me that you will get the spiritual understanding of Jehovah. It is me that you will get the spiritual truth from Jehovah. And that is the way that's going to work. That's the way it happens. Because we have this idea of of truth that's anything that you believe, anything that you feel. And this is, my friend, why the world is having such a difficult time. This is why we have so much confusion going on today because the world is trying to say, this is truth. And what they do is they want to remove God from it. They want to remove all presence of Jesus from it. They want to apply another false God. They want to put another false deity in there. They want to claim something else to be truth. And by that fact, they're not getting the truth everything they're basing it on is a lie but when you apply Jesus to it and you apply what his word says now you have the truth to live on and that's the confusion that's the division and that's where we're not going to be able to find unity I hear people now all of a sudden All of these people who for the last several years have been calling for uprisings and things, now they want to call, let's all come together, let's be unified. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? The Bible tells us that there's no unity in that. You can't take those who are spiritually discerning and unify them with those who are spiritually unwise and have no truth they're living their lives by a lie and you put those together as a matter of fact jesus said i didn't come to unify look it up i didn't come to unify i came to divide i and, and there's going to be a division because we when we know the truth when we apply jesus listen to me There is no truth apart from Jesus. And people who are trying to find truth apart from Jesus will never find the truth. Those who have found truth in Jesus cannot deny it and move over to to a false truth. But that's spiritual truth. And the thing we need to understand is with that spiritual truth, knowing truth frees us up from the alternate reality that the world offers. Many young people or younger people than me even know what alternate realities are in video games. Amen? And that's where they create a world that they're whatever. They're the king of it. They're the master of it. They're the defender of it. They're whatever. 
That's an alternate reality. They have an alternate ego. That's what that means is, it's a, for them, it's a reality that's not true. And then you have a reality of life. And that's why a lot of people escape this reality of life into that alternate reality that they get control of because they get to understand this alternate reality a little bit better. But can I give you this? Is you better be careful if you understand alternate reality better than you know true reality. Because this is just imagination. This is what's real. Jesus said, I am real. I am the absolute truth. And you can't get to God apart from me. And we just sang it a few moments ago. In the, and it says in, in John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Now, listen. That truth is you shall know Jesus. And Jesus makes you free. The world likes to call this out. And, and the world likes to say... To, to a person that's lying, they say, well, if you'll just tell the truth, the truth will set you free. As I shared in the first service, you know, there's some people who, if they walk into a police station and tell the truth, they're going to get 10 to 20 or 20 to life. They're not going to get freedom. Amen? So that truth will not set you free. That truth could get you convicted. So this isn't telling. Now, we shouldn't go around telling lies. Amen? So it's not that truth. It's not telling you the, telling the truth that sets you free. It's the, having Jesus in your life that sets you free. Because you're free from all the nonsense of the world. You're free from the lack of understanding. You can now understand. I've been sharing now for almost 10 years standing on, on, on this platform. The closer you get to God, the more He reveals truth to you the less sense the world makes. Because that's not truth. Truth is found in the person of Jesus. But here's also the deal, and I'll wrap, start wrapping up here. The truth out in the world, because they're not applying Jesus to it, makes them look at us and not understand the thing we're doing. They don't get what we're seeing. They don't get our goals. They, they, get no, they get nothing about us because we're applying a different truth to the situation. So as I grow closer to God, the world makes less sense, but the less sense I make to the world. Because the world cannot, cannot, cannot understand what it is the church is founding themselves upon Jesus Christ is trying to do. That's the confusion. If you begin to apply truth to it as you see it, we have so many different truths, even in this room, even of y'all who are watching, uh, watching on live stream. If all of us were to apply our truth our own personal truth to any situation, what's going to ensue is mass chaos. Because everybody will do what's right in their own sight. Because that's what you believe. That's what you think is true. And then the question is always, well, preacher, how do you know what you believe is truth? Because the creator of this world spoke this. And can I tell you, listen to me, can I tell you, this has never, never been proven wrong. As a matter of fact, the longer we go and the closer and deeper into science we get, the more this is proven. Now they throw in caveats to make this thing lie. But if you put this, this is the infallible and errant word of God. And history proves this. Just look around us. Everything that is spoken in here happens. It's, it's going on. The result of stuff that we do, if we disobey this, what this says happens, happens. Nowhere else is that, is that the case. Nowhere else does it work like that. So how do I know it's true? Just look around. 
When people do what's right in their own eyes, look, we're seeing the result of that. It's not good. But when we have a standard to live by, it's a truthful standard. It's godly standard. It's proven over and over and over that this works. But no one is as blind as someone who just won't see it. So as we look through this next year coming up, one thing that I want you to understand is this, that we are the church. And the Bible says that upon that rock, the church, the testimony of of, of Peter when he said, you are the Christ, he says, upon that testimony, and that's the testimony of First Baptist West, amen, that Jesus is Christ. Upon that testimony, he will build the church, and the Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against that church. So can I tell you, if the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church, neither can COVID. If the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church, neither can 2021. So can I tell you, First Baptist West and all of you watching, the gates of hell cannot prevail against First Baptist West this year. 2021 cannot prevail against First Baptist West this year. Why? Because we're standing on the truth. That's the testimony of Jesus Christ, Him being the Son of God, Him being the Lord, Him being the one who gave the sacrifice on the cross for us, that through Him we can have eternal life. That's the truth. That's applying the real truth. So today, if you're here, you're watching, and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want to encourage you today, would you come to know Him? Would you come to know the truth? And I, I, I tell you this all the time, and if you're, if you're first time hearing me say this, I, I, want to, I want you to hear it, that I believe with all my heart that if you will stop for just a moment, all of you here, all of you watching, if you will pause for a moment and have no preconceived ideas, no thoughts of, of this craziness, but if you'll stop for a moment and clear your mind and you listen to the Word of God, I believe that still small voice will tell you He's telling the truth. You'll know it. Because here it is, God is not hiding from you. God's not hiding from any of you here. He's not hiding you from at home. That if you'll pause for a second, you'll know and he'll speak to you. I trust that. You know how I know? Because he did it to me. Shelter First Baptist Church. Oh boy, never been to church hardly ever. Was invited to go to revival. Went to revival. Third night of revival. I paused for a second. Tried not to have any preconceived ideas of what was going on. And all of a sudden, boom, I heard it. I knew I needed Jesus. That'll happen to all of you here today. If you don't know Jesus, it'll happen if you'll pause for just a moment. Because God, His will is that all men be saved. Would you come to receive Jesus today? And you'll, you, you say, well, I don't understand. Boy, will you receive Jesus in your heart? It'll all open up to you then there's growing. But maybe you're here today and you say, or you're at home and you say, Pastor, I know Jesus. I've been saved, but man, I, I, I know that I've been confused now. I've been, man, I've been allowing things in that shouldn't be, and I, boy, I, I've gotten this confusion. Well, all you need to do is today is say, God, forgive me for trying to find other truths and re- uh, restore back to me the joy of your salvation, which is the truth of Jesus. Restore that back to me. Bring me wisdom. God, bring me understanding of what's going on. Give me guidance of where to go from here. And I promise you, the Bible says he'll do that. Right here, right now. Would you just say, God, here I am. Because I promise you, he will reveal it all to you. He will reveal that truth to you. And then it'll all start making some sense. Would you call on him right now? I'm going to ask the praise team to come on back up as we step into this part of our service. And, and this is a time for you to respond, to see where God's leading you. You at home, you can, you can call and someone will be praying with you. If, you'll just, if you need us, we're here. But listen, you don't need me. You can do this all on your own. Be set free today. Be set free by the blood of Jesus as he has died on the cross for you. Would you come this morning? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for the truth that you've given us. And as we step into this few moments to sing this song of praise to you, Lord, I pray that you would speak to the hearts of everyone here. God, I pray that you'd speak to the hearts of those at home listening. 
watching us on the live stream, that, Father, you would just speak truth to them. God, they would receive that truth. Those who don't know you would receive you into their lives. Those who know you would recommit them, themselves to you, surrender themselves back over to you, Lord. To be able to move forward in, in this new year. Thank you, Father, for what you're about to do in these next few moments. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me as we sing?